on today's primetime local news. One local student is heading to Skills Alberta Provincials after winning gold in the regional competition. It was fun to win. Uh, I didn't expect to win, but it was a good surprise. And after six months of renovations, Lakeland's Agriculture Sciences Lab gets a huge upgrade. The lab space was smaller and the facilities, you know, the benches and everything was smaller. Plus, the midget AA hockey team hosts the playoffs for the first time in five years. Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. A kindness event took place at Jack Kemp School today after a grade six class won a grant from Beyond Borders Circle of Change. Students enjoyed a day filled with games, art and different activities with help from the Youth Council and the Sexual Assault Services. The event helps spread kindness throughout the school and shows the students how easy it is to be kind with one another. Great to see the grade sixes in a leadership role and trying to facilitate different programs with the kids. And they were in charge of organize, like getting all this stuff ready. They were in charge of helping the kids, Div 1 and Div 2, do the activities. So they are taking full like, responsibility for the whole thing. All of the money raised will be donated to either the SPCA or a children's hospital. The grade six students planned the idea by a brainstorming session in class from all the activities the kids could participate in. There was bracelet making, card making, fortune tellers, yoga, tech. Uh, there's tech force. Reading and photography. Yeah, reading and photography. Since this is the first year the school has held a kindness event, they hope to have it annually in the future. One local student who competed in the Regional Skills Alberta competition came away with gold in the electrical installation category, and he's getting set to compete in provincials. Our Jasmine King has more. The skills competition took place in February, where students from across the Lakeland region competed for a chance to move on to provincials. The regional and provincial skills competition is a great way to promote the trades, to get these students thinking about becoming journeymen and um, yeah, pursuing a career in those areas. It's much needed, right? So, and it, it offers a great career for kids. So anything we can do to promote that here, we. We do. One student from Avery Outreach School came away with gold in electrical installation and the school gathered to celebrate. I came to Avery School, I hadn't really considered it much and the teachers proposed it as an option and it seemed like a fun challenge, time to try something new, see if I could excel at something else too. He says the regional competition wasn't too difficult but it will eventually become harder. We had three walls and we were pretty much wiring up a mini house, we were out wiring up a few switches, plugs sub panel just simple basic wiring it'll get more complex as the competitions continue avery school has a few programs that revolve around the trades we have a construction uh, course as well so typically um, um, building sheds uh, things like that it, projects that they may be interested in um, individually but then also electrical 10 20 and 30 so that's something we do in the classroom here uh, we're able to do in this small space so uh, it gives kids a good sense of what what's involved. Travis says he's a bit nervous for provincials in Edmonton but doesn't want it to get the best of him. I also know people that have competed there so I know what to expect and you can't be nervous because it'll just affect your ability to work. Jasmine King, Primetime Local News. Well, if you ever wanted a chance to be in a commercial, well, here's your opportunity to take part in one over the weekend. Discover Lloyd Minster will be shooting a commercial at Bud Miller Park on Sunday at 9.30 a.m. They need extras, and all you need to do is show up in winter clothes with no visible logos. If you have skates, you should bring them as well, but if not, you can still take part in other winter activities like sledding. We'll meet right outside the PSM Lawyers Park Center beside the Splash Park there. So look for me and a guy with a camera um, and we will be heading out just onto the ice surface um, and they can just come and join and just, if they come a little bit late, just skate on in the background. 
Once the ads are completed, they'll be featured on the Discovery Lloydminster social media pages. Discovery Lloydminster promotes tourism in the Lloydminster area. It's all about getting people to experience their own city, experience the, um, the people who travel through Lloyd, maybe stop and visit for a little bit, um, and making Lloyd more of a bit of a destination. So lots of people come in to Lloyd to go shopping or go to the movie theater or the Bobcats game, and we're saying that's great, keep doing that, and here's some other things you can do while you're here as well. Families are encouraged to participate, and you can find more information on the Discovery Lloydminster Facebook page. Available 24 hours a day, Orion Machining and Design ensures quality with years of experience at their shop. Eric Bay has more in this week's BioClean Business Bio. Providing machining services for the oil and gas industry, Orion Machining and Design is able to complete projects of any size. We have uh, some of the large capacities in Western Canada. We can go down from parts to under a quarter inch as large as 36 inches in diameter, 15 feet long, uh, beyond that upwards to 60 feet long. Orion also provides expertise, consulting on designs to create an efficient product. Someone's working on a project, trying to design, really optimize their design with the manufacturing process. So we'll step in and we'll guide that with all of our years of experience and just our knowledge of downhole tools and PCP pumps, we're able to help guide customers to make sure that they're making the right choices in the design to make it affordable down the line. There is also a full-time quality inspector to ensure the product is the best possible. So every one of our parts is fully vetted before it leaves the shop, 100% inspection. And uh, with that, it's allowed us to have some pretty remarkable growth where we've gone from seven employees in April to now 17 employees. Just some, some progressive ideas that, uh, that we've put forward and really service and quality have been our bread and butter. Orion also has 24-hour service to remedy any emergency. And that's this week's BioClean Business Bio. Homes are for everyone. Your home is your sanctuary, your oasis, your safe place. Let our family take care of yours while you get back to your life. And now for a look at your evening weather with our Eric Bay. Thanks, Judy. Taking a look here at Lloydminster weather, the temperature has dropped one degree down to zero right now. As you can see, a little bit of cloud cover rolling in, and we are going to see some wind here tonight, making it feel like minus 10 overnight here in the border city. Now, as we take a look around the region here in Alberta, you can see Mar Wayne sitting at zero, Cold Lake up at two, along with Lac La Biche there in the north, Bonneville sitting at one, St. Paul zero as well. And as we look down Highway 16, you can see Edmonton one degree, Vegreville sitting at zero, Vermilion two degrees and down in Provost four degrees and as we move over to the Saskatchewan side of the border, minus two in Isle La Crosse, zero in Green Lake, one in Meadow Lake, zero St. Wahlberg, one degree we're seeing in Maidstone and minus three in North Battleford. They could also see some fog here overnight so be careful if you are driving in that area and down to four degrees in Macklin. Now here looking overnight at the border city down to minus four, I did mention that wind chill will make it feel more like minus 10 there and tomorrow we will wake up and get one degree before that drop off for the weekend. A little bit of mix of sun and cloud here as you can see. North Battleford now overnight down to minus four. I mentioned those fog patches. However, they will be seeing three degrees tomorrow along with some sun and a little bit of wind so should still feel about four degrees. Taking a look up in Cold Lake in the north currently two degrees. A little bit of cloud cover you see overnight though there clearing off but down to minus seven before getting back up there at one degree tomorrow with some flakes. You can see that possibly developing here in the afternoon. As we take a look now at your three day forecast, there is that cold I mentioned coming up this weekend after the one degree, some sunshine Friday down to minus 11 for the high and some flurry Saturday, minus 12 and flurries on Sunday, 75% and 55% chance respectively. Wind chill feeling in the minus 20s. We'll have more primetime local news coming up after the break.
Welcome back. Lakeland College has upgraded its facilities, renovating the labs for the environmental and agricultural science programs. Eric Bay has more on how the upgrades will improve students' experience in this week's Ag Report. The school spent six months upgrading four labs, giving the students more space for work or research. The working stations, if you look at them, the chairs and all that, they can put their legs underneath and we change all that and they can put their stuff here and the working uh, benches are really good. And we got six film heads here in the chemistry lab and the space looks really bright and nice, you know. So that's one of the things that. So they have a very good uh, space to work on and there, there are the boards, the instructors can write on these boards. The agricultural stream is hands-on, so the new facilities will give students the chance to study samples brought back from outdoors. We give theory, but that's backed by hands-on experience in the laboratories here, inside the laboratories, as well as we take the students outside, you know, to the forest and various contaminated sites and stuff like that. And so wetlands, you know, we do a lot of wetlands and we have 1,700 acres uh, of land uh, around us, which belongs to the college. We take students to those uh, areas as well. So far the reaction to the new labs has been positive. I think we are very happy with the new uh, labs. We renovated all four labs and uh, I think I, I, I talked to the students and they're really happy and the instructors are happy too. So I think I think it's a good experience and a new beginning for us. Agricultural students use the labs for soil and plant labs. Eric Bay, Primetime Local News. This ag report is brought to you by the Lloydminster Co-op Agro Center. Depend on them for product, tools, and expert advice. Shop at your local Lloyd Co-op Agro Center with branch locations in Lashburn and Neilburg. Protein Industries Canada has announced its fifth approved supercluster project. The project will see $3 million spent to improve the value of Fibro's co-products from the pulse processing industry. The idea is to transform them into an organic micronutrient fertilizer. The consortium consists of Lucent Biosciences from Vancouver and AGT Foods and ingredients from Regina. Lucent will use the hulls of pea and lentil seeds, which are a co-product from value added processing completed by AGT Foods and ingredients. Uh, Protein Industries Canada and Industry have invested more than $70 million into Canada's plant protein ecosystem. And here are your agriculture prices for today. part of less than 5% of Canadian auto body shops and Lloydminster's only locations with certified collision care recognition at City Centre Auto Body. This weekend, more hockey playoffs will be hosted in the border city. The Lloydminster Blazers Midget AA team are hosting their first round tournament. Each of the four divisions in the Northern Alberta Midget Hockey League hosts a tournament involving everyone from the division. The winner of the round robin tournament moves on to play one of the other four winners. It's pretty much uh, the regular season means nothing whether you're first or sixth. It's if, any, if somebody's playing good and you have an off game, you could be out of the tournament. So you got to be on your game right from start of the first uh, game to, to the end. Last year, the tournament was hosted in Strathcona County. This is the fifth year of this playoff format and the first time that Lloyd Minster will be hosting. It's pretty exciting. The, the boys are pretty, pretty jacked up and, and ready to go. So um, it's not too often we get this opportunity. So yeah, we're, we're very excited. The tournament takes place all weekend long with all games being at the service center. Now we'll throw it over to our Eric Bay with a look at the weather. Thanks, Evan. Once again, taking a look back at your weather here in the border city. As you can see, that temperature has dropped to zero. 
right now in Lloyd Minster expect some of that wind to pick up here before dying off around midnight. Moving north now, you see the temperature has dropped slightly. Two degrees in Cold Lake, zero up in Athabasca, moving over to the central. One degree in Edmonton, two in Edson, and three in Jasper over in the west. Also four in Rocky Mountain House, and two degrees down in Red Deer. Taking a look over now at the Saskatchewan side of the border, a little bit colder there. You see one degree in Meadow Lake, minus three currently in Prince Albert, minus three in Melfort, minus two in Saskatoon, and another minus three in North Battleford. And they are also possibly seeing some of those fog patches here later tonight as well. As we move into tomorrow's forecast, you can see a little bit chillier, minus two up in Isle La Crosse, two degrees in both Green Lake and Meadow Lake, one degree Pearsland, one in St. Wahlberg, three over in North Battleford, and two in Maidstone. As we make our way back into the border city, we will be reaching one degree and sunshine, which is what we, we will be waking up to so that'll be nice to see zero in Mar Wayne up to one degree in both Cold Lake and Bonneville to the north minus four only in Lac La Biche minus three St. Paul minus four in Edmonton minus two Vagerville zero in Vermilion minus one Wainwright and two degrees in Provost taking a look at what you can expect for tomorrow's school day on Friday minus three in the morning with sunshine before clouds do start to roll in you see there at recess and getting up to minus two minus one by lunch with some more cloud cover coming in and then one degree by the time we head home for that weekend with some of that cloud cover starting to move off. As we move now into those overnight temperatures around the region, minus six in Meadow Lake, minus six as well in Isle Cross with a little bit of cloud cover. However, no flurries it looks like around the area, minus six as well, Paradise Hill. Seeing minus six in Bonneville and fairly clear there as well. A warm one in Provost at minus one with some of that cloud cover and minus three as well in Wainwright. Now with your satellite radar, you can see a little bit there of that precipitation in the Vagerville Mar Wayne area, just about to Lloyd Minster, but that should miss us fairly well, as, and also a little bit there too in Edmonton region, and some scuffs right there in Cold Lake as we see up there. And national weather, you can see fairly warm all across the region, minus 8 in Winnipeg, colder, cold spot there, minus 2 out east coast, St. John's, and 7 degrees in Vancouver. As we take a look now at what you can expect for the next seven days here in Lloyd Minster, warm one tomorrow, as we said, 1 degree, but dropping down for that weekend, minus 11 Saturday, 75% chance of some flurries, and again, cold on Sunday, minus 12, 55% chance of those flurries before coming back up, minus 6 and sunny Monday, minus 3 sunny Tuesday, and then leveling out 2 degrees sun mix on Wednesday and 0 and cloudy on Thursday. We'll have more primetime local news coming up after the break. There's a lot of warning about coronavirus and traveling, of course, with the spread of coronavirus. The question is, are you concerned about uh, traveling outside the country for vacation? I say yes to a certain degree, right? Confined places like being on a boat, for example, or a ship. That kind of stuff scares me. For example, um, the cruise ship that was held outside of uh, San Francisco. Yep. It was headed to San Francisco from Hawaii. And so they decided, hey, you're not coming over here and, and infecting us. So they left them on the, you know. In yeah, the, in, for out sure. There, leave, right? them off, leave them <laughs> yeah. off the shore, and that, yeah. that's smart for sure. Obviously, if they are infected, you don't. You want to make sure that everybody's safe before yeah. you do let them out and possibly infect others. But I think that, like you said, you got to stay away from those cruise ships or all those confined spaces where it can just multiply and yeah. infect everybody. That those close quarters. So as long as you're smart and you know take those extra precautions, wash your hands, you yeah. should be okay. Definitely, and I think also uh, German Airlines Lufthansa suspends seven thousand one hundred flights in March, including Israel. I don't think I would fly, first of all, including going on ships, but flying as well. A lot of people want to travel to different places, but these are the places that they're saying, hey, don't come, don't do that. So I don't even know why people are saying, yes, they would do it. Yeah, and I mean, it's tough too, because this is kind of maybe peak travel season yeah. in Canada. Summer, obviously, people are going places for vacation, yeah. so it's going to be tough. But I think really, as long as you stay out of those hot spots, you yeah. mentioned Israel, Italy too, even uh, China, we've seen. So yeah. I think as you, as long as you avoid those places, you should be okay. And including California, because I think there's a, they declared a state of emergency after one person died. Yeah, stay away like, from there too. That's crazy. The whole place, that's a nice place to vacation, of course. A lot of people. And Mexico was another one that people love to go to, but they decided, hmm, maybe they shouldn't because yeah, that's another very, one. Yeah, very popular. Obviously a great chance for that to happen, yeah. but just be smart. Exactly. And these smart cats and dogs that we're going to see right now, thanks for sending your pets for a chance to win a gift card from the Pet Pad. Here are some of uh, the ones that we have today.
We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. I'm pleased to be joined today by Darcy Wildeman. Darcy, you're the president of the Local Kinsman Club, and we're talking Telemiracle today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, this is going to be a little bit strange year for you, because even though Telemiracle's on, uh, you're not really directly involved in the production this year. Right. This year, it's, uh, it's quite a change for us, actually. <laughs> over, the, over the past uh, seven, eight years, I've been directly involved mm -hmm. on the Telemiracle Committee itself. And, and prior to that, we always went and, and volunteered as as members of the local club and and this year we're unable to even attend the show so for my wife Leanne and myself we're going to do something we haven't done in a while and and uh, sit down and actually watch <laughs> part of the show so it's quite exciting for us that way as well so well and let's talk about the tell miracle event itself because you've had so much experience and exposure to it what's it like actually being there it's it's amazing it's 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 so hard to put into words um, when you have 600 volunteers from across Saskatchewan um, working for the same common goal and uh, the the mood you go down into the common room downstairs and and there's a hundred people sitting there and, and it, it's so hard to put into to words the emotions the the highs the lows the the whole experience is just amazing like it's it's something that uh, I'll, I'll never forget as a member for sure well, and we were talking earlier, even anybody who's grown up in Saskatchewan, because this is for 44 years now, this event, has a memory of Telemiracle, either going to sit and watch it with your friends or doing a fundraiser or watching it at home, you know, as a teenager and trying to stay up and watch it all oh, night. So exactly, yeah. it's ingrained yeah. into yeah. Saskatchewan history. And, yeah. and are you amazed that it's continued this long? Yes, we've actually, uh, <laughs> it's funny, the, the, when it first started 44 years ago, one of the Lloyd members, or uh, I guess Dr. Fred Murray, was uh, very involved in the first committee. And uh, they never ever dreamed it would make a second show, and they never ever dreamed it would make a million dollars the first show. Um, here we are, 44 years <laughs> later, setting world records and, and still going strong, raising five million dollars, seven million dollars every year. It just amazes me the people of Saskatchewan how they keep this going. And uh, from a club member, we appreciate it. Well, and that's a testament to the Kinsmen and Kinets too, because as you said, it does take a lot of volunteer time to put this on. And it's not just the process of the actual event, then it's giving the money after as well. So volunteers have to be hugely important to Telemiracle and to your organization as oh, well. For sure they are, yes. Um, the, the Telemiracle show process itself is a year and a half in the planning. <laughs> so the Telemiracle 45 committee is already built right. and already working. The, for the next one. For the next <laughs> one. So it's a, it's a, about a half a year overlay where they build onto the next year's process. And uh, after that, they, the, there's a dedicated group of, of volunteers across Saskatchewan that sit on the foundation board, which meet every um, five to six weeks. And that's how the giving process goes. And you've been involved in the giving process, Darcy. That must be something that, I mean, so many people apply and you guys have to sit and weed through it, but it must be really, really rewarding. The, uh, the giving process is unbelievably rewarding. Um, it's sad to, to read through the, the applications and see that that many people need funding, but it's also very re rewarding being part of the process that can actually fund that money. It's, um, you get uh, individuals that are, are looking for a $35 handrail, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. and uh, you wonder, boy, we look at it as you and I would walk down to the local hardware store and purchase a handrail for $35 and think nothing of it. And then you get the next individual looking for a, a scooter and, and uh, it's quite the process, but very re rewarding when you can... And life-changing for some of these oh, people. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, the one application I did, um, when you get the opportunity to phone the lady back and say, your, your scooter's been granted to you, and you hear dead silence on the other end of the phone because they're so emotional mm -hmm. that they're no longer housebound after being housebound for 18 months, not being able to leave their house. It's just, it's an unbelievable feeling. And the Lloydminster Kinsman Club will be making a presentation on Telemiracle. Do you know what time that's going to happen this year? Yes, we're making our presentation, or I should say the members that are going right. are making their <laughs> presentation at uh, approximately just after 10 o'clock Lloydminster time. On Saturday evening. On Saturday evening, yeah. So that's uh, just after 11 Saskatchewan time. Right, the so, time change weekend kind of messes things yes, up. Yeah, but it's hard to get your 
bearing straight and round, <laughs> but it is ten, just after 10 Lloyd time, Saturday okay. night. Great, and we'll be televising that so people get a chance to watch and make a donation. Obviously, that's the biggest part, is encouraging people to make, and I know that some people say, well, I can't do a large donation, but it's just as important to make the small ones because they all oh, add for up. For sure, yes. Anything any, anything makes a difference. Uh, you might think that 5 or $10 that, that doesn't make a difference, but if it's 100 individuals doing that, it all, it all adds up. Um, the pennies add up, the dimes add up, right. it, it all adds up. So all we ask is, is uh, reach into your pocket and do what you can do, uh, make, a, make a donation of what you feel comfortable doing. Because as obviously we don't want to put yourself in a financial mm -hmm. trouble. So, But it helps so many people that every little bit counts. Yes, every little bit does count indeed. Okay, well Darcy, thank you for joining us today. I know it's going to be different for you having to watch the show this year. It will be. But I'm sure you'll be back again at some point to yes. help out. Oh, so for sure indeed, yes. Thank yeah. you yes. and you know, congratulations. The Kinsmen and Canets have done such good work, not only in this community, but with Telemiracle. So it's just, it's an honor to have you on the show today. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. The Snowden Comedy Tour is in Lloydminster tonight, and if you want even more laughter in your life, head to Vermillion on Saturday. They've got a comedian coming to town, Lawrence Wolf. He's going to be performing at the Legion in Vermillion, and he is the 2011 Funny Fest talent winner. So he's been a comedian for a few years now, so you know you're going to enjoy some great laughter. Get your tickets by stopping by the Legion in Vermillion and enjoy a funny show on Saturday night. Tickets just went on sale for the annual Todd Gustafson Memorial Battle of the Badges. So get your ticket so that you know you're in for a chance to see members of the Lloydminster RCMP take on members of the Lloydminster Fire Department in a battle, a great hockey game that's going to take to the ice at the Civic Centre in Lloydminster on March the 28th. And last year, the Lloydminster RCMP won the game, so they're proudly still displaying that trophy. But the Lloydminster Fire Department says that this is their year. So who's Who's going to win it all will be there so that you get to see it in person. Plus, when you get your ticket, you help out a couple of great organizations. Funds raised are going to be split between the Lloydminster Catholic School Division and their outreach program and the Lloydminster Public School Division and their breakfast program. If you want to get your ticket, there's a number of different places you can pick up your ticket, including by stopping by City Hall. And if you're ready to tackle a bit of a bigger hill, Mountjoy Snow Resort, it's going to be open this weekend. Actually, it's open on Friday night for its first ever moonlight skiing. So you can head out tomorrow night starting at 6. And then this weekend, Sunday is Lloydminster Lions Club Day. So you've got an opportunity to enjoy some hot chocolate, maybe roast a marshmallow or two, and have a fun day skiing at Mountjoy Snow Resort. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Cleggis, and that's what's happening. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. In studio with Dr. Neki Jamal of Wayside Dental. Thank you for stopping in, Neki. You. Uh, you've been a busy boy the past yeah. month, uh, specifically when you took a trip to India. Uh, it's not the first time, obviously, you've traveled overseas, but your first time in that country. Yeah, it was, uh, it was wild. We, uh, we had a team of 16 people, and we went down for two weeks uh, just north of New Delhi. And uh, I think we got a, a good taste of real India and, and we got to help a whole bunch of people and, and it was awesome. Yeah, and uh, only, I guess the only negative is that your voice is taking some recovery yeah, from a it. Yeah, a bit of a pollution issue there. It got to my voice a little bit, but I'll, I'll, be, I'll bounce back. That's good. For <laughs> sure. What, what any in particular highlights you had? Obviously, you helped so many different people on these trips that don't have access to proper dental care. Absolutely. It was just, it was such a surreal experience. Like, we're so used to going to Central and South America where uh, people line up and they know that you're coming and they have so much infection in their mouth and they just want you to take it out. And uh, so it was a completely different brigade. As everyone knows, India is filled with over a billion people and there was just so many people on the streets and cows and honking horns and it's amongst all of its chaos, it's really beauty underneath. And, uh, and it was awesome. We got to help over uh, five to 600 people. Um, but this trip was a little bit unique because instead of people you know, telling us what was wrong, we almost had to explain to them, hey, you have seven infected teeth, I can help you take them out. But they, they always looked at you weird and they're like, but why would you take those out? I'm still chewing on them. And, and even though their gums are so swollen and they're having pain, they don't want to lose them. And 
it was unique because I've never been put in that uh, position before right. where I've had to actually explain to everyone an infected tooth can cause you pain and this is where your pain is coming from. So it was, uh, it was a different trip that way, but I, I really enjoyed it. I got to, to talk to the local people and of course we had translators yeah. and uh, I got to meet, meet with a lot of kids and it was great. Oh, that's awesome. Obviously, yeah. a lot of people have supported you over the years with yeah. the trip as well. So they were uh, certainly excited, I think, to see all the pictures. Totally. I, like, once again, I know I, I try to thank everyone whenever I come on here, but like Lloyd Minster has been such a huge support for Wayside going on all these trips. Uh, uh, one of my main assistants, one of our hygienists came with us um, as well. And, and I'm just I'm just so grateful that I, I live in this amazing community that is so supportive of, of helping people throughout the world. Absolutely. And you actually want to continue to help people on an even more permanent basis. So you want to start a charity, correct? Yeah, I find um, I've always been working through other charities and it's been great. And I still will continue to work with those charities. But um, I want to take a more uh, leadership role in, in actually running the charity so I can, you know, make sure our administrative costs stay really low and, uh, and we're able to help the most amount of people. And I want to take a, a bigger part in these projects rather than just coming and, and you know organizing people to, to drill the water well or, or fundraising money I want to take a more hands-on approach to it and uh, and in the same areas that we do drill water wells in throughout the world I want to bring our dental team there and and fix their teeth and so I, I think it'd just be a, just a great way to meld my two passions together absolutely do you have a name uh, set yet yeah we've been a unique name it's called Maji and Mino and the direct translation from Swahili um, is water and teeth and uh, that, that's always been my passion. So Maggi and Mino, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we're working on uh, bringing it to light right now. And, and I hope Lloyd Minister continues to support us there. And I, I'll, I'll get you a, a nice looking Maggi and Mino hoodie, Josh. So you can always, I uh, much appreciate that because <laughs> you know you I appreciate a nice hoodie. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, any particular uh, goals in terms of this is the first trip we want to be able to fundraise? So that's still a little bit down the road. Well, it's still down the road. I'm still fundraising uh, through Change for Children. Um, that's the charity that, that uh, we work with and all of our water projects are in Nicaragua and I'm going back to Nicaragua in May with Change for Children to, to you know, drill more wells and, and see exactly what's been going on over there the last, last couple of years and, and uh, I can't wait to report back to um, you know, all of our donors and, and just show them how amazing of a difference we can make. And whether it's in water or whether it's in teeth, I just want everyone to know that we all have the ability to change someone's today, someone's tomorrow, and someone's forever. And so I just, you know, you know me, man. I, <laughs> I just want everyone to, sure. to help out where they can. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you so much for doing what you do. Thank you, As Josh. well as uh, thank you for all the great talks you've given us over the years. So again, so what date specifically do you leave quickly in May? Uh, I'm heading off uh, May long weekend. I'm, okay. uh, I'm heading off there for a week and, and uh, I, I just can't wait. I'm just so yeah. excited. Always excited for the next adventure, right? And many people, I'm sure, will be excited yeah. for you as well. Thanks, Josh. And so if, now if I can also take the camera's attention for just a second, this is my last uh, appearance on the set here at Primetime Local News. Uh, I'm off to North Battleford for a new opportunity there. It's been a pleasure uh, being a part of the news cycle, talking to Neki Jamal and other gentlemen like him and uh, ladies as well. And uh, I just want to say thank you specifically to all the staff here at NewCap, who, uh, a new cap now primetime local news, I should say, who have uh, supported me over these four years through that transition from new cap to primetime and uh, for my transition from just a weekend weather anchor, really green, trying to get, you know, on his own two feet to at times covering city politics, sports, as well as anchoring cast. So it's been a pleasure. I'll miss Lloyd Minster, but I'm also really just down the road. So I'm sure I'll be back to visit more than a few times. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your cast. Once more, another look at the seven days ahead, up to one degree, mix of sun and cloud for Friday before dropping off 10 degrees to Saturday, minus 11, low of minus 15, and that 75% chance of some flurries. And Sunday too, cold again, minus 12, 55% chance of those flurries before finally coming back up, minus six and sunny on Monday, and then minus three, sunny again on Tuesday before we do see some of that cloud cover roll in again, and up to two though on Wednesday before finally finishing zero on Thursday. Thursday. Awesome. Let's talk a little bit about the question of the day. Of course, it was, you know, coronavirus spreading and whether or not people would travel. I we were talking about saying we wouldn't travel. I don't know. A lot of people would travel. Do you, 
International Airlines was 50% no-show for people. It was crazy. Yeah, it's definitely impacting everyone's travel vacations, and it is something you kind of have to take into consideration yeah. wherever you are going. Yeah, for sure. And, of course, New York, 22 cases. Oh, my gosh, I don't know if we'll, do, we'll be able to do that. I uh, couldn't tell you. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. And that is it for the show. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow.